Hello and welcome to Books You Should Read, the podcast where we dive into fascinating books and extract valuable insights for your personal and professional life. I'm your host, Bookworm Beth, and today we're exploring Predictably Irrational by Dan Airely. Have you ever wondered why we make the decisions we do? Why we sometimes act in ways that seem, well, irrational? Dan Ariely's Predictably Irrational takes us on a journey through the hidden forces that shape our decisions, revealing the surprising ways in which we're not as rational as we think we are. Ariely begins by challenging our understanding of relativity. We tend to compare things to one another rather than evaluating them in isolation. This leads to some interesting outcomes. For example, when we're presented with three options, let's say, three types of magazine subscriptions, we often choose the middle option, even if it's not the best value for us. Airy Lee demonstrates this with a clever experiment involving The Economist magazine, showing how adding a seemingly useless option can actually influence our choice. Let's dive deeper into this concept. Airy Lee set up an experiment where people were offered three subscription options for The Economist. An online-only subscription for $59, a print-only subscription for $125, and a print and online subscription also for $125. Most people chose the print and online option, seeing it as the best value. But here's the twist. When Airely removed the print-only option, more people chose the cheaper online-only subscription. The presence of the decoy print-only option had made the print and online option seem like a better deal, even though the actual offerings hadn't changed. This principle of relativity doesn't just apply to purchasing decisions. It affects how we see ourselves, our relationships, and our place in the world. We're constantly making comparisons, and these comparisons shape our perceptions and decisions in ways we might not even realize. But it's not just about comparisons. Airy Lee delves into the power of free. Yes, that's free with an exclamation mark. We humans have an irrational excitement about getting something for nothing. Aerial Lee's experiments show that we'll often choose a free item over a better option that costs just a small amount. It's as if the word, free, short circuits our decision-making process. In one experiment, Airy Lee offered people a choice between a high-quality lint truffle for 15 cents and a lower-quality Hershey's kiss for 1 cent. Most people chose the truffle, but when he lowered the price of each by 1 cent, making the truffle 14 cents and the kiss free, most people chose the kiss. The power of free is so strong that it led people to choose a lower quality option just because it was free. This irrational excitement over free things has implications far beyond chocolate choices. It affects how we make decisions about healthcare, education, and financial products. Companies use free offers to lure us in, knowing that once we're hooked, we're likely to spend more money. Understanding this tendency can help us make better decisions and avoid falling into marketing traps. Now, let's talk about social norms versus market norms. Airy Lee explains that we live in two worlds simultaneously, one where social norms prevail, and another governed by market norms. When these worlds collide, things get interesting. For instance, if you offer to pay your mother-in-law for Thanksgiving dinner, you're likely to cause offense. Why? Because you've introduced market norms into a situation governed by social norms. This concept has far-reaching implications, especially in the business world. Companies often try to create social relationships with their customers, portraying themselves as friends or family. But when they then act according to market norms, like imposing strict late fees, it can backfire spectacularly. Airy Lee illustrates this with an example of a daycare center that introduced a fine for parents who were late picking up the children. Instead of reducing late pickups, the fine actually increased them. Why? Because it changed the relationship from a social norm, feeling guilty about inconveniencing the teachers, to a market norm, paying for a service. Parents felt they could buy the right to be late, and the social pressure to be on time disappeared. This understanding of social and market norms can be incredibly useful in our personal and professional lives. It can help us navigate relationships more effectively, understand why certain business strategies work or fail, and even improve our own decision-making processes.
Airy Lee also explores the influence of arousal on our decision making. In a rather risque experiment, he shows that when we're in a state of arousal, we make very different decisions than we predict we would when we're in a cold state. This has important implications for understanding risky behaviors and how to address them. In this experiment, participants were asked to answer questions about sexual behavior in two states, non-aroused and aroused. The results were striking. When aroused, people were much more likely to say they would engage in risky or unethical behaviors than they had predicted when not aroused. This hot-cold empathy gap shows how poor we are at predicting our own behavior in emotionally charged situations. This insight isn't just about sexual behavior. It applies to any situation where emotions run high, whether it's anger, fear, or excitement. Understanding this tendency can help us make better decisions by recognizing when we might be in an emotionally charged state and taking steps to cool down before making important choices. Procrastination is another area where our irrationality shines through. Airy Lee conducted an experiment with his students, allowing them to set their own deadlines for assignments. Interestingly, students who had externally imposed deadlines performed better than those who set their own deadlines, who in turn did better than those with no deadlines at all. This suggests that while we recognize our tendency to procrastinate, we're not always great at self-imposing the structure we need to overcome it. This finding has implications for how we manage our time and tasks, both in academic settings and in our professional lives. It suggests that externally imposed deadlines can be beneficial, and that when we have control over our own schedules, we should consider setting firm deadlines for ourselves and treating them as if they were externally imposed. The concept of ownership is another fascinating area Airely explores. We tend to overvalue what we own, simply because it's ours. This endowment effect can lead us to make poor decisions, holding on to things we should let go of, or asking unreasonable prices for items we want to sell. Airy Lee demonstrates this with an experiment involving Duke University basketball tickets. Students who won tickets in a lottery valued them much more highly than students who didn't win tickets were willing to pay for them. The mere fact of ownership dramatically increased the perceived value of the tickets. This endowment effect doesn't just apply to physical objects. We can feel ownership over ideas, projects, or even potential opportunities. Understanding this tendency can help us make more objective decisions about what to keep and what to let go of in our lives. Expectations play a huge role in our experiences too. Airy Lee shows how our expectations can actually change our subjective experiences. In one experiment, People enjoyed beer more when they thought it was a special brew, even when it was just regular beer with a dash of vinegar added. This has implications for everything from marketing to healthcare. This power of expectation extends to many areas of our lives. It affects how we experience food, wine, movies, and even medical treatments. Aerially's research suggests that expensive placebos are more effective than cheap ones, simply because we expect them to work better. Understanding the power of expectations can help us in many ways. It can make us more critical consumers, less swayed by marketing hype. It can also help us harness the power of positive expectations in our own lives, potentially improving our experiences and outcomes. Speaking of healthcare, Aerily delves into the power of placebos. He shows how the price of a drug can actually affect its efficacy. People experience more pain relief from a more expensive placebo than a cheaper one. This raises interesting questions about the role of cost in our healthcare system and how we perceive value. This placebo effect isn't limited to pain relief. It extends to many areas of medicine and even beyond. Aerially's research suggests that the rituals surrounding medical treatments, the fancy equipment, the white coats, the technical language, all contribute to their effectiveness by enhancing our expectations. Airy Lee also explores the cycle of distrust in our society. Through clever experiments, he demonstrates how we've become increasingly distrustful, not just of those trying to swindle us, but of everyone. This has serious implications for how we interact with businesses and each other. In one experiment, Airy Lee set up a booth offering free money in a busy area. Surprisingly few people stopped to take the free money, assuming there must be a catch. 
This widespread distrust can make it difficult for businesses to build genuine relationships with customers, and it can complicate our personal relationships as well. Finally, Airely tackles the thorny issue of dishonesty. Through a series of experiments, he shows that most of us are willing to cheat a little bit, as long as we can still think of ourselves as honest people. This fudge factor in our moral compass has significant implications for understanding white-collar crime and how to combat it. In one experiment, participants were given a test with the opportunity to cheat. Most people cheated a little, but not as much as they could have. Interestingly, when participants were reminded of moral standards by recalling the Ten Commandments, before the test, cheating disappeared entirely. This suggests that small reminders of ethics can have a big impact on behavior. Throughout the book, Airy Lee doesn't just point out our irrational behaviors, he offers insights into how we can overcome them. By understanding the hidden forces that shape our decisions, we can make better choices in our personal and professional lives. For example, knowing about the power of free can help us evaluate, free, offers more critically. Understanding social and market norms can help us navigate relationships more effectively. Recognizing our tendency to procrastinate can help us set better deadlines for ourselves. And being aware of our fudge factor when it comes to honesty can help us be more ethical in our daily lives. In conclusion, predictably irrational is a fascinating exploration of human behavior that challenges our assumptions about rationality. It offers valuable insights that can help us make better decisions, understand others more deeply, and navigate the complex world of human interactions more effectively. By recognizing our predictable irrationalities, we can design better policies, create more effective businesses, and lead more satisfying personal lives. Ariely's work reminds us that while we may not always be rational, understanding our irrationality is the first step towards making better decisions. If you're interested in diving deeper into the research behind these ideas, Airy Lee provides a comprehensive bibliography and additional readings at the end of the book. These resources can be invaluable for anyone looking to explore these concepts further or apply them in their personal or professional life. That's all for today's episode of Books You Should Read. If you enjoyed this summary of Predictably Irrational, don't forget to like and subscribe to our podcast. And hey, why not hit that bell icon to get notifications about new episodes? Until next time, keep reading, keep learning, and remember, we may be irrational, but at least we're predictable about it. This is Bookworm Beth, signing off.